Good evening. I'm Destiny and this is Tax Tax Treats. I can talk also. Welcome. Um, tonight we're going to do snickerdoodles. And in case you're wondering, I've had some people say, is all you're going to do cookies? No, but it is the holiday baking season. So it's quite helpful, I think, for people to have some low carb treats that they can take to the office, to those office parties, and can nibble on instead of eating the ones they don't want to eat shouldn't eat, depending on your perspective. So well, let's get started. The recipe is down below on one of my um, finds down there. See a picture of the cookies. We're making snickerdoodles. Mmm, tasty. So in front of me, I have already measured four cups for 448, 450 grams of almond flour. Um, it's already got the tablespoon of baking powder in it down here because I was making, getting two recipes ready and accidentally put it in both of them. So we'll go ahead and dump that in the blender bowl or mixer bowl and note that it's sticking and then we'll get the spatula and scrape that out because we don't want to leave that behind. Quite a bit of oil in almond flour, so you want to be careful and keep your almond flour fresh, or it'll be rancid, and that wouldn't be very tasty. Put that over here in the sink. All right, so to that we will add a half a cup of pure. And let's see. Of course, I don't have that out. I grabbed everything else. I don't have someone to sneak it to me in the scene. So I will uh, grab it myself. So half a cup of Stevia Pure Organic Stevia Blend. So it's Stevia and Ethanol. Nice level cup. It has to be perfect. Science, but not rocket science. Not gonna blow anybody up with a little bit too much ethanol. I gotta remember not to do that. I know it's really loud, sorry. Set that aside. I'll be needing it again shortly, possibly. So I'll put this on the mixer. Again, you can mix this by hand or with a hand mixer or with a stand mixer. It doesn't have to be a KitchenAid. I just happen to have a KitchenAid. Very old KitchenAid. Well, it's not very 20 years old. So, you know, older than one of my children. Now I'm going to stir it up to break up the clumps and mix in, mix the dry ingredients together. I'm getting a little loud, I should have warned you, sorry. You always want to scrape the sides when you're using a mixer because unless it's a mixer with an attachment that does it for you, stuff is going to get flung to the sides and there is a certain amount of room between your mixer blades and your bowl. Otherwise it would make a horrible, horrible sound, more so than it already does. I mean, do it a little bit more. They're all nice and mixed together. Um, so next we're going to add the butter. That's a stick of butter or eight tablespoons melted because you want it liquid. Four eggs. Those are four large eggs. If you have medium, use medium. A quarter cup of Toronto syrup. Or four tablespoons if you don't have a quarter cup. And I think that's it. Yeah, that is it. 
And I start my mixer and then add all the ingredients. Starting it out on stir or low. get it out from the, the eater because it's the way it's shaped. And that of course links it to the side so then you have to scrape it down, which you should anyway, to make sure you've got all your dry ingredients incorporated. You don't have any lumps of baking powder or almond flour on the side. It's a pretty simple recipe at this point anyway. One of the downsides of a KitchenAid or one that doesn't tilt back is that you kind of have to turn it on for a second to get the blade out from the side that it stops on. Put my finger in there. Your natural spatula or scraper. Lift it up. And do it again, so I'll whip it up to high again. With this mixer, because of the mixer blade I have in there, it all tends to want to clump in the center. That's why I turn it up on high. It doesn't necessarily have to be done on high, but just easier to get it out from the center that way. it uses almond flour it smells almost like it has almond um, almond extract there's the rosé for or almond liqueur oh that helps to put the bowl down so there we go there's the bowl get this out of the way Not too much noise there that's out of the way you have a very fluffy yellow dough white depends on I guess your perspective also depends on how rich the yolks are in your eggs it'll be very varying degrees of yellow because of that you know what I mean if you've ever raised chickens farm fresh eggs tend to be much richer than uh, grocery store eggs Although they're coming around these days, you're getting uh, more farm fresh produce and uh, dairy products in the stores, depending on where you shop. Pretty tasty. Tastes like an old sugar cookie recipe I used to have that called for almond extract as well as vanilla. That was really tasty uh, sugar cookie. It was also very dry. It was made for rolling out the Christmas cookies. All right, so now we've got our batter all mixed up. Let me show it to you. Can you see that real well? Oops. 
need another light on the counter for things like that. But I'm scraping it down from the sides to get it all on one side so it's easier to portion. We're going to use the one tablespoon scoop again from the Pampered Chef small scoop. Any other one tablespoon scoop will work. A level tablespoon measuring spoon would work. It just depends what you have in the house. There we go, it's all scooched to the side. Now I'm going to use a tray table to lower my mixing bowl down because when I scoop it on the counter, being the bowl so high, I'm like wrenching my arm, which makes my neck hurt. So if you ever wondered, you do a lot of baking, a lot of stuff like that, your neck's only somewhere on one side, that's probably why. So we're going to move the tray table over here. I redesigned my kitchen, I'm going to have a counter lower so that I can do that. So down here, I'm going to get my pans, which are over here, or a pan. I've been baking a few today, so there's a few crumbs here and there. These are my cinnamon fill pats. Notice how they're much darker than the other ones were from the cinnamon oil. And before that, peanut oil from my peanut butter. I'm putting on gloves. These are vinyl kitchen gloves. I don't use latex because I'm allergic and you never know who might be eating them. They might be. And latex starts breaking down about 15 minutes after you put it on. So, always better to be safe than sorry. Pretty easy to come by. You can use your bare hands if you want. I've just discovered that using gloves makes them roll better and they don't stick to my hand as badly. No, no. Nothing like having an entire cookie worth of dough stuck on your hands. I've been using these today, so they're a little sticky. Oh, backwards, too. Come on, make yourself comfortable. Then, over here, I've already got it mixed. But I take a third of a cup of the stevia ethanol blend and a tablespoon of cinnamon, and you mix them together, and it looks like this. That you can't see because of the light. There. So you get a cinnamon sugar texture look. Um, you might be thinking that's a lot of cinnamon, but you want that classic snickerdoodles have that really dark cinnamon outer crust because it picks up more of the cinnamon than it does the sugar. So let's get started. We'll roll these out. This recipe makes about 70 to 72 cookies, depending on how well you scoop them. I scoop them. It's really soft dough. Like extremely soft, see? So, put it in there. It's not going to roll around like traditional snickerdoodles will because um, they're a stiffer dough and you refrigerator, refrigerate them, not refrigerator them. So you have to be really gentle with these. I've tried refrigerating these and chilling them. And they don't seem to come out as well. They come out looking like oak balls. And even when I do it this way, I'm going to try this time patting them down a little bit to try and get more of that traditional cracking that you get with the uh, regular snickerdoodles. So you see how they turn out. Hopefully they will look more snickerdoodly. It's a slow process. You might want to draft a child or two, or an adult. But be prepared if you do. Odds are you're going to have less cookies. Because cookie dough and its ultimate allure to children and husbands. Or significant others. A little bit stickier than this afternoon. I think it's because of the moisture. The humidity is rising. It's supposed to rain here in a little bit. It's been pretty cloudy all day. Someone might say, well, what about high altitude directions? I live at ocean level, so I don't really have any. 
And if you've been baking a lot at high altitudes, you probably would have more experience with that than I would. But just use your best judgment, whether it needs a little bit more almond flour or whatnot. You just kind of toss it around. With the uh, traditional snickerdoodle dough, you just kind of roll it around in the bowl. And like I said, I'm patting them out a little bit, unlike earlier when I made them, or when I made them in the past. I kind of leave them in a ball. And I'm trying to get more of that traditional snickerdoodle cracking that um, snickerdoodles are known for. So that people can look at it and go, oh, that's a snickerdoodle. Sorry if that makes a lot of noise, that little finger hold on the side. It's really helpful when I do this. So again, I do, I would do 35 on a pan. So that's five more. They don't rise a lot. They do rise some, but compared to like a chocolate chip cookie that oozes out and starts as a teaspoon sized ball and oozes out to a two inch cookie. These don't have that kind of spreading power, at least not so far. And as I do this, it seems like they stick a little less in places because of the oil from the butter. I will probably have to make some more ethanol and uh, cinnamon, or at least add more cinnamon to it. Not so much of the ethanol sticks to it as does the uh, cinnamon. As you can see, they're pretty dark. Okay, maybe that makes sense. You can see. I don't know if you can see how dark they are. Uh, and they slide. The joys of using a sill pat. Silicone is really good for these. They don't stick to it as much. And they're back in their nice little lines like good little soldiers. I mean, you might be like, oh, that's a lot of work. And it is, but it's worth it. It was easy. It'll be the fun. Kind of time consuming. Right? Maybe you can come up with a way to roll them in cinnamon faster. You can always put them on the tray and then pat them down and sprinkle cinnamon on them. They won't look quite as traditional that way though, but if all you're after is the way they taste, then that will work just fine. I got lazy toward the end of uh, one of the batches I made. I only had about six left, six cookies left, so I uh, did just that. I just sprinkled cinnamon sugar on them and Put them in the oven. They still taste just as good. Like I said, I'm after the traditional look and feel. I like tricking people. I mean, ha, huh, have some cookies. They're, ooh, snickerdoodles. And then they find out there's no flour in it and low carbs. And they're shocked and amazed. Just the thing you want at a holiday party. I read so many uh, Reddits where people face the holiday parties with such dread. Hopefully some of these recipes will make it a little better for people. Because they too can bring cookies. But you do want to make sure people aren't allergic to almonds, though. There is always that.
Yep, it does take quite a bit of time to uh, roll out 35 little cookies. Ah, I see my sister has visited the channel. Hi, sis. Hey, Deadly, is that you? Can't see from here on my glasses on. Smash them with a fork. Then they will not look like snickerdoodles, Deadly. What I'm after, I want them to look like snickerdoodle. My sister and a good friend of mine are in chat channel tonight, so. Should have probably put my glasses on so I could see chat better. I like the fact that I can get 35 of these on one pan because I could do a whole batch of cookies in two pans and have a lot of cookies. And these are my husband's favorite cookie. Not that he would say no to any other cookie, but these are his absolute favorite. Have been forever. have made let's see I should have made a pan in advance well yeah I, I have some made in advance but I'm also teaching people how to roll them and how to have patience and to listen to me chat for the next few minutes One day in the not-so-distant future, I'll use this time to answer many, many questions. But right now, you just get to watch. Zen and the Art of Cookies, yes. This is Zen and the Art of Cookies. Zen and the Art of Low-Carb Cookies. Don't forget that. Ah, these would also make a good gift for your favorite diabetic. I flick dough all over the place and get laughed at by my peanut gallery. Your favorite diabetic. What? Favorite person who's a diabetic? They are very hard people to shop for unless yes. they're very, very close. Because casual, you know, if you have a casual acquaintance and they're diabetic and you want to get them a gift, what's the go-to gift for most people during the holidays for acquaintances? Food. Sewing materials. What materials? Sewing materials. Sewing materials, because so many people sew. We'll go with that. Is the recipe paleo friendly? I believe so. Um, now there's butter in it. I don't think paleo is, I think paleo is non-butter. Although some people in paleo do butter and cheese. Can't see without cookies. Oh, such a horrible, horrible thing. For mashing them out, I think I'm only going to end up fitting 20 on here. Wait, seven times four, 28. I can math, really. So the suffering is almost over.
I honestly am not sure if they're paleo friendly. If you're doing paleo and you're not cutting out dairy, probably. But I've heard different views on paleo. Some people are like just no grains. Some people are like no gluten. Some people are like no grains, no gluten, no dairy. I'm not giving up butter and cheese anytime soon, so. Oh, and the macros on this. Aha, I have them written down this time so I can see them. The, um, for a serving of six, it is 339 calories. Oh, 5.5 carbs, 2.7 grams of fiber, eight, or not eight, 11.7 grams of protein, which makes it 2.8 net carbs. So you could eat more than six probably. And they make good breakfast cookies. So much better than cereal. I need to figure out a way to make them into cinnamon toast crunch. Make them crunchy in milk. I need to remember tomorrow to get coconut to make coconut ones. Because those are really good. They taste like macaroons. And I'm getting the yay symbol from my daughter, or the okay, or legit, whatever she's trying to tell me. She's the one who really likes coconut in this house. Give me all, all right. Almond. Yes, she'll, she'll steal all your almond joys from Halloween. All right, so I'm only going to put 28 on there. I know you're relieved. Stick those in the pan. For 12 and a half or so minutes. Your time may vary. I'm going to wash my gloves. Oh. And you can listen to me for 13 and 8 moments. Like what? Macrones? Macrones? Make them flat? Yes. My fingers handy to make them flat. Deadly, did you get a chance to make the chocolate chip cookies? Yes, these are like the cookies I brought you. I brought you the chocolate breakfast cookies. These are snickerdoodle version. I'd say 2.0, but they're not 2.0, they're snickerdoodle. <laughs> so here's what one batch that I made looks like. And I said batch I made, I was trying to make you, make you, show you how they look when you refrigerate the dough. Makes it easier to roll, but you get oak ball looking snickerdoodles. So I'm jokingly thinking about renaming it to my oak ball snickerdoodles. And uh, over here in my future cookie jar, I have some that were made without the refrigeration. They're a little bit bigger, a little bit flatter. Not by much, though. This batch still looks a little flat. But I also didn't use as much cinnamon on those, so they're not as dark. They're just as tasty. Really they look inside? Can you see those? Gotta work on the lights from there. Hmm? Nice and white in the center. So tasty. Oh, poofy. What are we poofying? Poofy, poofy. No, not giant, just very round, very firm snickerdoodles. Hopefully, when these come out, they'll be more flat. If not, I don't know what to say. Some more cookies to do. More cookies to do. More cookies to eat. More cookies to eat and do. Good stuff. I could be your assistant. Everything is good with coffee. That is not true. <laughs> Toothpaste, not good with coffee. <laughs> so.
spaghetti. Not so good with coffee. Just about anything sweet is good with coffee, except toothpaste. It isn't sweet. Hmm? Well, at first, sweet. Toothpaste is sweet. They're very tasty. Then I'll stand here and eat one, and you can't. <laughs> you will have to make them, then you can eat them. No, no, Coke is not good with it either. With toothpaste. I don't think, is there anything good with toothpaste? Please put the cookies down. The hands on the side of the screen belong to my daughter. Why don't you have an actual cookie instead of the whole bowl of dough? Are you going to be your assistant for the next batch? Oh, you're going to be my assistant for the next batch? What does that mean? Sure. I don't know if there's an efficient move. One for you, one for the pan? No. Yes, they did. But that is really good, though. I don't know if you remember the uh, almond cookies I used to make, or the white sugar cookies I used to make that had almond in them. She's not camera shy at all. Yep. Mickey is always here. Big thing of cinnamon. Yeah. While I'm talking, I'm prepping some more cinnamon sugar so I can finish the rest of the cookies. Yeah, if you were here deadly, you could have some free cookies, but you're not. Sucks to be you. We can ship some to him. But he can cook them himself. He has a way with cooking. And then he can earn brownie points with his family. Oh, that scraping is not too loud. Too. Well, if you were helping, yeah. You can wash your hands. Oh, yeah. The whole, you know, washing your hands thing. Kind of a prerequisite to helping in the kitchen, yeah. Add it. You have about five more minutes. I know you're thrilled. Because you got to see them when they come out again. The well, make sure you get all the flour and make these cookies. The oven. What? The oven. The oven. We should hurry up. Because they really want to listen to water running. I think water running is relaxing. Sorry, right, that's loud. With soap, Mickey. I did. That's what your aunt said. I'm just relaying the chat. What's this? It's not the camera. No, but it's over there. Okay, you can hold it up to the chat screen. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to Comic Relief. Oh, you can't hear the water? That's good. That's good, that's good, that's good. Yeah, the only one's in here. So, I guess you can be the purveyor of cinnamon upon the dough. Hopefully she won't eat one for every one she actually cinnamons. As I look behind me to make sure. Hmm? Because you have to do this. You've been sitting here the whole time I've been doing this and you haven't. I need gloves. I need no. Okay. Okay. 
Just toss it around. You're not supposed to touch it. Throw cinnamon over it. Mickey learns cookie. <laughs> That's okay. Let it know. These ones are going to be really disturbed looking ones. <laughs> My special cookie. In the special way. Okay, let me show you. So good at this. Yeah, I've had 37 years to learn. And then some for cookies. Well, you haven't had 30 years to learn with these things. No, but I've had 37 years to learn to cook. And that bowl has been in the family for 37 years. That was my mom's bowl. Okay. And across the United States. I don't know where they originated, though. I don't know if those originated in Chicago or not. Do I do it better? 37. Yeah, I've been cooking for 37 years. Is that your sister? Yeah. Thirty-seven. Cough. I'm not sure why we're coughing. I've been cooking independently since I was 13. Oops. I would make you sick. No, I said I've been cooking for 37 years, Gail. And how many years before that did we make cookies with mom? Been making cookies all my life. Cookies are good. Well, I want seven across and four this way because mushing them out a little bit, they're taking up more room than they usually do. So long. Yeah, we've been making cookies since we were infants. Let's see. A couple more minutes. Aren't you thrilled? And your sister, you can sleep in for me. <laughs> I can speak. She thought I said I was 37. Yeah, that would have been a laugh. Your sister, you can put the finger of the wind. You're thrilled. Why are you thrilled? That one looks good. I, I did a good one. Sweet. Yeah. And then I smashed it. At least it smashed into something that actually looks like a cookie, unlike the, my first one. That looks like a cookie. That looks like an oval cookie. Looks like an egg. Flat Eggs egg. are oval. Flat egg. Let's get more oblong ovals. Not even a thing. They're, no, they're <laughs> less oblong, oblong than they're ovals. Okay. They're, they're more rounded. Hello, outside. everyone who's coming in the channel, or at least speaking up now. Oh, wait, are there more people? Yeah. yeah. <sighs> there are more people. They have come to watch your cookie making prowess. Yeah. Okay, it washes off. Especially when you apply soap. Oh, yeah. What kind of cookie is best? The kind that's going in my mouth. That's the best kind of Yes, that is the timer saying our cookies are done. Ooh, ooh, good time. I'm gonna get cinnamon inside my pot holders. Oh, look at that. Ooh, oh, look. Like snickerdoodles. They look very snickerdoodly. Oh, very snickerdoodly. Yes, that's a new word, snickerdoodly. There we go, guys. Ooh, look. They do look more traditional than my oak balls. They sound hot. They should sound hot. <laughs> they just came out of the oven. I did it. Really? Oh, it wasn't the cookies that were sizzling. It was the counter when I set it down. There must have been some drops of water over there. So oh, let's see. I can turn them up here. When the counter boils. When the counter boils, yes. 
when your mom grabs the pan with gloves on that are not oven mitts. I didn't burn myself though. You see them? I know, things in the way, things in the way. There, now can you see them? As they go sliding off, same. <laughs> I'll let those cool and not grab the pan again with my hands. <laughs> you might ask, how often do I burn myself? Entirely too often. I should know better by now. But that's that. So there you go. They are yummy and they do look way more snickerdoodle like. So I think that will be our new method. Pat gently into saucer shape. I'll have to add that to the recipe. So if I have any questions, other than can you have some? Because unless you can get here within the next oh hour, you're going to be out of luck. Well, it tastes better the next day. Well, there's that, but will there be any left tomorrow? Yeah. Okay. I highly doubt we're going to eat an entire two bags within one night. Are you disappointed? <laughs> and it wouldn't be two bags. This is only a single batch, not a double batch. How do I donate? I don't have that set up yet. I'm new. Wait, I'm a Twitch that? noob. Wait, who was that? Who was that? That was uh, Vanman1998. Who that? I do not know. It is a person in my family. Oh. So eventually you'll be able to donate, but at this time you can just watch. It'll be, uh, the video will be up on YouTube. The Recipe is down below. I will also put that on YouTube. I need to update that. And you can buy stuff. And get. They can buy stuff from me. But if you, if you want to buy any of the Pamper Chef products I'm using tonight, you can get that down below also. There's a link to my page. I am. Or what? I'm a Twitch pleb. Oh. Twitch pleb. Pleb, pleb. Noob. Noobie. <laughs> so. Any other questions? Scroll down on the page. There should be banners underneath the video. You might have to expand. I know they disappear to way to the bottom on mine unless I expand my page. Not on the app. Okay. I don't know how to make that show up on the app. I'll have to figure that out. If it does even show up on the app. It's my banners below. No. Learn something new every day. I should make a pie for Shasta pie. Mickey here wants me to make a uh, pumpkin pie. It's a little far away to make Shasta pie a pie though. Guess I could ship it FedEx. <laughs> I don't know if I could make an actual pie with Shasta though. I don't know any recipes that require carbonated water. Although I take that back, there are some regular cookie or regular pie crust that you use sparkling water and soda water. And you could very possibly make carbonated ice cream, but that's not pie. That's true. I feel like Coca Cola. Apparently she would like a Coca-Cola, not a Shasta. UPS is better. Do they have a overnight delivery? That's actually overnight. 
like seventy dollars. My experience with UPS is that they say overnight and then go, it'll be there in two days. I'm like, how is that overnight? It's over two days. It's even better. Did you have to take a nap for two days? All right there, that one's finished. Let's scoop these out now that the pan is cool. Let's glue these. Let's move my oak balls down here. Snickerdoodle oak balls for the win. Still taste good. These aren't as bad as the chocolate ones at having cool. These are still pretty good when they're warm. You can use soda and cake recipes. I don't have any of those recipes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Need a thinner spatula. I've misplaced my super thin one. I'll find it again and then lose it again. So there they are. Tasty. Yummy. Would that be Concerto and Mickey Meyer? No? That was Fantissimo. I just knew you were humming. I wasn't sure what it was. Well, that pretty much concludes the show. So I'm going to turn the stream off and uh, catch you guys next Thursday with another tasty recipe. Not sure what. I'm going to leave it as a surprise. Will it be cookies again? Will it be something else? Will it be meat? Meat is good. All right. Well, I will see you guys next week. This is Destiny from Tax Treats. Bye, guys.